What's up guys, just a quick video on testing your system RAM to make sure it's stable. Uh, you might find that you can play a bunch of games, but there's that one more intensive game, like one of the big ones lately is Warzone, that will tend to stutter and have issues running on an otherwise stable system. And I always say to people, like, have you stability tested your RAM? And then sometimes, I'll, not all the time, but I'll get the reply, all the other games run fine. And the games that they mention, like, aren't particularly intensive titles. So when you're using, when you're playing a more intensive title, it's going to put more load on your RAM, more stress on your system RAM, because there's more data being transferred or being streamed uh, between your RAM and your GPU. And that's where if you have a slight instability, it might be completely stable for other games like Fortnite, but then you go to play Warzone and it stutters. And it's actually because there's a RAM instability that's causing errors which have to be corrected. And they're not bad enough to cause the game to crash, but it can just cause glitchy gameplay, uh, drop frames and things like that. So basically, this is for slight instability, but it also detects severe instability really quick. Uh, there is a few ways to test your memory. One of the simple ones, if you're not very good with like configuring and downloading programs, is to just go to your start menu and type Windows Memory. Hopefully you're on Windows 10. And you can see here Windows Memory Diagnostic, that'll schedule it to run on your next reboot. And it takes a few hours, depending on how much RAM you have. And it tends to be a bit slower in, from what I've found. And the, the frustrating thing is you can't really use your computer because it does it before boot, uh, before uh, logging into Windows. So it's not doing it at the desktop. So it is good because it's built in, but it's also limited in the way that you can't use it, your computer at all while it's running. So, you, it's, so it's like one of those things where you'd, you'd leave it to run and you'd go out and then you'll come back and find that there was an error. You have to tweak your RAM uh, or get to the bottom of it, and then you have to run the diagnostic again. Well, there's this other application that you can see here. It's called HCI MemTest. And MemTest lets you run it in Windows, which is really good. And you can basically set exactly how much RAM you want to use. And the good thing about that is that you can leave like 10 to 20% spare resources for Windows and other processes. So if you want to at least, you know, Watch, watch a stream, watch something on YouTube, you can do that as long as you leave the spare resources or you can test more of your RAM to be a bit more thorough. But for the most part, leaving 10 to 20%, you'll still be able to t detect instability just fine because you're still using that RAM to do something while the test is running. So now the, the, the tedious thing about this program is that if you use the free version, because there is a paid version as well that lets you, you can see here, this is MemTest Pro, that lets you set the threads and how many megabytes per thread. And this is to, buy, to divide the test across the threads on your CPU to speed up the testing. So for example, if you have 16 gig and you test all 16 gig on one thread, it's gonna be much slower than if you divide it, that, that 16 gig across eight threads or 16 threads, depending on what CPU you have. But the thing is that the pro version is the only one with that feature. And if you use the free version, you're left like this. Uh, you have to start it up and do it manually. So as an example, I've got 16 gig of RAM, so 16 times 1024, so that's how much megabytes is in a gig. So 16 gig times 1024 is 16384, and let's just say minus 10% or minus 20% to leave some free because I want to browse YouTube or something. And that would leave me with, I'd want to test about 13.1 gigs. And then I'd have to divide that by the number of threads to do this part manually that the, the pro version lets you do. So th I'm just showing you how to do it. You can do it manually if you want. And then I'm going to show you the easy way to do it without having to buy pro. So as you can see here, then I would divide this number, this 80% of my total RAM, I divide it by however many threads I want to split the RAM across. So eight threads for my quad core hyper threaded CPU, or if you're running a Ryzen 5, it would probably be six, uh, 12 threads. But as you can see here, it would leave me with 1638 per instance. And this is the manual way I put in 1638. And then I would start it up seven more times. <laughs> Pretty tedious. And 1638. And I would just do that, you know, for the number of threads I have. So, and then I'd start them all manually, start testing, start like this, start testing. And if there's any like really bad error, it'll, you see this coverage here. You probably want to get it to about 200% coverage across all however many threads and how much RAM you're testing. And if there's any errors, any stability, it'll pop up with an error. Just stop the test because you've got to tweak your RAM or do something because it's not stable. So that's that's basically how to use it. But again, it's tedious to start up that many threads manually. And, it's, and you also have to watch for the errors. Like even if you're AFK or you're watching YouTube, you don't really 
know there's an error unless it's serious it'll pop up and tell you that there's an error but it's not like a set and forget thing you have to you do have to monitor it from time to time just check on it make sure there's no errors and try to hit 200 percent if you can get 200 percent i'd say your system is pretty darn stable at least good enough for the majority of games uh because you know there's a certain point where if you test with enough applications and intensive enough applications you can bring up instability like if you test for long enough uh if you load the system for like over 24 hours, you could bring up an error that otherwise would never ever appear under normal circumstances. So you just have to be aware of that. But anyway, I'm going to now show you the automated version of this is go to your browser and search for, as you can see here, I've already got it up on GitHub, but Memphis Helper in Google, it's the first result. There's a GitHub on it. And someone basically created a, a automation, automated process to do it. So download the free version here, memtest.zip, unzip it into a folder on your, you know, in your downloads folder, as you can see here, memtest HCI, and then download should be under releases here on the right. So you can just click that, memtest helper, and download that and unzip it to the same folder. So all the files will be in here, and then run memtest helper2.exe. And this basically gives you very similar to the to the UI of the paid version of the pro version. Maybe not as sleek, but pretty good and it also puts it into however many threads you're running into one window so then you basically just set it up I'll just show you here you put in that total so 80% of your total system RAM so for 32 gig you know you just calculate it 32 times 1024 it doesn't have to be precise um, it's just I just I know that 1 gig is 1024 so I put it there but just say minus 10% because it's a bit more and so I'm leaving like three gig for system and maybe for one YouTube tab or something like that. So 29 gig, or you could do 28, whatever. Put that figure in, put in the number of threads of your CPU. You might be happy to run it. Like you could have a 16, uh, 16 thread CPU. You might be happy to run it on 14 threads because it'll still finish fairly quick because you've got so many more threads than a normal quad core. Uh, so it just depends. Up, it's up to you. Just depends what you're doing with your system. And... So for example, I've set it here for my setup, 13.5, because I've got 16 gig of RAM, eight threads. And this is the window offsets for the those those memtest helper windows, because this is going to pop them all up. You can set where you want them to appear on the screen. You could have center and how many rows. So you want one row of memtest helper all the way across your screen, or do you have a smaller monitor? You might want two or four rows. So it'll it'll stack them like row here, a row here, a row here, like that, instead of like this as an example. So you can have like one single row or longer, have them stacked like that. So I'll just I'll put two rows because it's only eight threads on my CPU. Uh, you set the top uh, stop time, so stop at 200% coverage. Stop on error, obviously, because you don't want to waste your time testing. If there's an error, it means it's not stable. There's no point testing further. And it doesn't it doesn't mean your system's going to crash if there's an error. It just means that your RAM's not rock stable, and that can affect performance and games and things like that. And then start minimized. So if you want those windows to pop up minimized, you can have them to do that. So they'll just appear here. Or if you just want to show them all from the get go, let's show it. And then under this part, you can also hide those windows manually if you just want to hide it and use this window to, to monitor everything. So now I'll start it because I do have enough spare resources to run this while recording. And you'll see it'll automate all those memtest free windows instead of me having to do it manually, I just put them into two rows. And it's already started testing. So you can see here the coverage. And if there's any errors, if your RAM's unstable, then, sorry, sometimes a window does crash. Um, I think it's to do with Windows, the latest build of Windows that I'm on, because I'm on a really recent version of Windows. As you can see here, Windows 20 H2. Uh, in which case, if you want that automated window, you just simply restart it <laughs> and just do it again. But it's not that important. It's just more the automation process that's helpful. Or I could put it down to seven threads instead and one row. Like that, start. So as you can see, when I change the thread count, it changes the size automatically of the total across those threads. And I can show those windows with this button or I can hide them. But yeah, it's crashing. I think it's to do with my version of Windows. Don't worry about that. As long as these windows are open, 
it's it's not connected. Like even though this thing automates it, once these things are running, the test is working. Okay, so most version builds of Windows, especially if you haven't updated to the latest latest, will probably run it fine. But that's just so you're aware that it can crash, and then just look at it. You've already got the Windows open, and it's doing what you need it to do. So once that's running, you can just let it go. And one more thing to check is that if you've got a Ryzen or an Intel system with XMP, Extreme Memory Profile, or with Ryzen, I think it's called DOCP with AMD, um, that's to enable the higher speeds of your RAM. So if you buy a 3200 megahertz kit of RAM, that's already above the, the spec. It's above the AMD or the Intel specification for the majority, for all CPUs pretty much, except maybe Ryzen 5000. So in other words, you have to enable those speeds or it'll run at a base speed of 2133 to 2400 megahertz usually. So to if you haven't done that or if you're not sure, sorry, just go to your browser, download CPU-Z because it's the easiest way to bring up you know, system details. Download that here. You can use the, there's an installer or you can just have a zip file where you run it out of the zip file and unzip it. So it's up to you which one. And I think I've got it installed. Yeah, so CPU-Z, and this is how you check that your RAM is running at whatever speed that you think it should be running at. Is you go to CPU-Z and the memory tab, and the DRAM frequency is the base frequency, which is not the DDR frequency. So DDR means uh, double data rate. So the, the the actual effective speed will be two times whatever your DRAM frequency is. So as you can see, I'm running 1500 megahertz DRAM frequency. That means my effective speed, DDR, is 3000 megahertz. But if you were running, say, yeah, if you if you thought you were running a 3200 megahertz kit, it should show 1600 megahertz here. And if it's showing 1033, then you're probably running, well, you are running at 2133 megahertz. Uh, not 2133, 2066 megahertz. So in other words, yeah, you could be running at a base speed and you wouldn't even know it unless you checked in, in a program. So you can see here, it's also got some details. These are pre-configured profiles loaded into your RAM. And if your RAM, uh, if, you're, if your motherboard boots up, and you haven't set the XMP speed of what the RAM's capable of, or if the XMP speed was enabled but it wasn't stable, then your motherboard and your will default to one of these JDEX, uh, these default profiles that's on the RAM itself. As you can see here, so it could default to 1200 meg. Well, it'll be 1200 megahertz on my kit, but it's different for every kit. It depends on the the quality of the RAM chips, and it'll also tell you a few details like your your manufacturer, uh, the the memory chips themselves are Hynix mine and the ranks which usually for 8 gig sticks it's single and for 16 gig sticks it's usually dual but yeah they're just good details to know Th this ram is actually a 3600 megahertz kit but i couldn't get it stable because of my cpu memory controller i'm guessing uh but i was able to tune it down to at least 3000 megahertz c15 1717 not the best but it does the job so that's just so you know where to check and you can also do stuff like check your BIOS in here. I'm on 1.fo for my Z170 board. And you can do a CPU-Z test. If you've ever seen review sites that they post CPU-Z results, you can just test it in there. Bench or stress CPU. You can see a few other default, depending on your version of CPU-Z. You can also see the scores of certain other models. Anyway, uh, I hope that helps you guys figure out how to use how to use HCI mem test easily and test your memory to make sure it's stable. And yeah, try to do at least two hundred. If if you've got the spare time, you could do more. You could do three hundred percent, but uh, around two hundred, anything higher than that tends to be a bit of a waste of time. Uh, like you're kind of just searching for a needle that doesn't nece won't necessarily pop up at all in regular usage. So basically, uh, since I upgraded my RAM or I changed to this kit of RAM because I was running a slower kit before. Since I changed over to this kit of RAM, I did the 200% test. I can't remember if I ran Windows Memory Diagnostic for maybe two or three passes, but 200% HCI mem test, and then I just, you know, made sure it was stable. Uh, I did error at 3600, obviously, and that's why I ended up settling for 3000, because I couldn't even get it to boot at different frequencies above three. Uh, so it seems like my CPU memory controller just 
doesn't like to doesn't like RAM at too high of a speed because uh, it's a 6th gen. And yeah, I just did 200% and set it and forget it. And it's been rock stable through all the videos. Like all the videos I've done in the past, you know, you can see I've done a lot of videos uh, in the past few months, maybe five months, and no crashes, nothing. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And if that helps you, then please like and subscribe. And if you want a detailed guide on anything in particular or this, you know, an issue with your system that you need help with, uh, I can actually do videos on a per user basis depending on what they're asking for. But for the most part, I'll just reply and I'll give you some steps that might be able to help you out. So, yeah, thanks for watching and see ya.